All right, guys, we're going to be putting a Henry 4570 lever action rifle through its paces today. I went down to the local grocery store to grab some volunteers, and uh, they came along and decided to help us out with this testing today. So let's see how things go. Don't worry, little guy, it'll all be over soon. You too. <laughs> oh, he's rolling over. He's going to play dead. I don't think so. What's wrong? Cold feet? Never volunteer to go to the range with me again. <laughs> well, that's a lot of fun. Can't go wrong slamming some big old 4570s into stuff. So we're going to back off, take a few more shots at a few random things, talk a little bit more about this rifle. Very awesome rifle from Henry, all American made. This is just a beauty of a gun. Let's uh, have some more fun. We're gonna take out a couple of more things for you here before we move on to the longer range. We're running some hand loads here. These are Hornady uh, 325 grain FTXs. Chad cooked up, kind of a middle of the range load, not too hot, not too mild, just to put the gun through its paces a little bit. We got some three liter sodas hanging up back there that you know we're gonna have to peg with this thing. Yes, I said three liters. Let's see how they come apart. A little 4570 action. Oh, I missed. Just to the right. <laughs> Boy, it puts a wallop on them, that's for sure. You can't go wrong with a 4570 in general. You know, it's a good cartridge. Been around for a long time. You know, very, very kind of old cartridge. You know, a lot of the early specs that the cartridge is loaded to, obviously, the original Springfield trapdoor single shot gun, lower pressures, but a lot of these modern 4570s can actually handle some pretty butt stomping loads. And the 4570 is a real versatile caliber in general because you can stabilize a wide variety of different bullet weights. If you're a hand loader, you can hand load it pretty much any way you want. You can run cast, which we do have some cast ammo over here. We'll probably run through it here in a little bit. Um, you can run black powder through this if you want. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to have to clean up after it, but you certainly can do it. This is a little Henry lever action rifle. It's got a brass frame. The receiver is drilled and tapped for Weaver number 63B uh, mount. So it's pre-drilled and tapped from the factory. It's got an octagonal barrel, 22 inches long. The twist, I believe, is a one in 20 on these. It's got buckhorn sights. Uh, many of you guys have been asking for more videos on lever action rifles and everything like that. So we've been trying to kind of accommodate that, get some more footage uh, of these things in action. They are a lot of fun to shoot. They have a certain nostalgia to them. A lot of American shooters love a lever action rifle. You know, many people remember the first deer they ever killed, and a lot of us use, you know, old lever actions uh, when we were growing up as kids to hunt deer and everything. A lot of our grandparents and fathers and people like that, figures in our lives, ended up using lever action rifles quite a bit. So uh, many of us kind of have a stigma with a lever action. There's just something about it that just brings apart that kind of childhood memories of using them. I mean, I know I've, I've been using them for a long time. Uh, beautiful walnut furniture on this gun, a little bit of nice figuring in the fore end there. I've seen them all over the place in terms of the amount of figure you're going to get. Uh, obviously, if you're going to go in and look at one of these, I'd go in and just check out the stocks, pick, it, pick you out one that's got a nice uh, pretty stock on it if, you, you know, if that's your thing. Brass butt plate, straight comb stock, which I like a lot. It's got a slightly larger loop for the lever. Uh, very smooth action on these guns. Um, it is a tube feed gun. All of Henry's uh, rifles are tube feed guns. So you just got a tube that opens up and you load the cartridges just like any other type of rifle through this port right here. Buckhorn sights are definitely usable. Um, I know Chad has an SBR version of the big boy uh, pistol that he turned into a like mayor's leg SBR with a regular stock on it and he used some Skinner peep sights on that particular gun. It's kind of a uh, like a rear like uh, diopter style peep sight with a very deliberate and wide front sight post. There are some other options out here if you want you know some upgraded sights or some aftermarket sights. Pretty sure you can get stuff from Lyman or any of the other op options that are out there. There's plenty of stuff out there for this kind of thing. Maybe even a tang sight. If you got a gunsmith that can drill and tap the tang, if you want to run like a tang sight, you can certainly do that. But the guns just scream nostalgia. They're a ton of fun. 
This particular rifle being a brass frame is kind of neat. It, it definitely catches some eyeballs at the range when you're out having fun. These guns are all American made, which is awesome. Something I really like about it. Um, I've been shooting this particular gun a good bit, mainly <laughs> blowing things up like you saw there uh, in the intro segments. They also offered this gun in a steel frame. I don't know if you guys have seen them or not, but you can get the like regular steel frame that's blued if you want, if you're into that kind of thing. They also, this year, just released an all-weather version of this particular gun as well. So this is their lever action is what they call it. Uh, this frame size, they have them in 30-30 and 45-70. Uh, and you can get all of those in the all-weather finish as well. So it's kind of more of a rugged outdoors, get it wet, throw it around in the truck, kind of a rugged everyday man finish. Um, that's probably what I'm going to end up picking up. I want this exact gun and an all-weather finish because I've got the uh, ginger sweat and I tend to rust things pretty bad. We have an original Henry, you know, the gun that you can load on Sunday and shoot all week in the truck over there. At some point, we're going to be doing a video on that one as well. And uh, I tell you, I've shot that gun a lot. I've probably put about 1,200 rounds through it, a 4440. And uh, the receiver on that thing is just has this ugly patina. But the neat thing about it, these brass receivers, if you don't try to polish them, don't worry about cleaning them up. As you handle them, it'll get some honest wear and tear, some honest patina, and it'll turn that kind of bronzy kind of color over time as it starts to kind of corrode a bit. I personally prefer that look in a lever action rifle with a brass frame like this. So I'm not, I'm not gonna clean it or wipe it down. I'm just gonna let it get all crusty looking because that's what I like. But the gun's been performing well. Uh, we have shot this particular gun for groups before. Accuracy is pretty dang good. I mean, if many of you guys are probably gonna be using a rifle like this to hunt with. Um, I mean, some people wanna go hunt deer with them. Uh, yeah, I'm the kind of guy I typically gonna take a gun like this out and just have a good time. This is a, a great gun to break out and just have some fun with the family and, uh, and just get out and shoot some rounds, put some rounds down range. So I'm gonna load the gun. It's uh, pretty straightforward to load. Uh, I found that with the loading procedure, it, it will load with the lever open or closed, but generally you're gonna make sure the, the you know, rifle's empty. And you'll close the lever, thumb the hammer down. Now this gun doesn't have any of those kind of bull crap safeties like you see on some of the other uh, lever action firearms that are out there. It's just got, you just drop it into the safety, safety position. It doesn't click into a safety position, it actually has a hollow in the hammer. So in order for it to fire, you actually have to have the trigger pulled. But don't let it fall, okay? Ease it down into place, make sure the chamber's empty, grab your rounds. Now they advertise this rifle as holding four rounds. You can put five in it. It's kind of one of those random things. I'm gonna try putting five in it. When you put five in, the tip of the round barely pops out of the loading gate. So let, let's try it. Let's see if we can get it to hold five. I'm just gonna kinda see if we can get them in there. Now that lever sometimes wants to sort of pop open and one thing I noticed on this gun is that the, if you're not careful, the, the rims will kind of stack up against the rod. Sometimes you just got to give it a little pop and it is flared on the bottom. So it'll sort of find its way and it'll close just fine. So uh, to load the gun, cycle the action and it's ready to shoot. Now I'm just going to thumb the hammer down gently. I'll set the gun down, put my ear pro on. I'm going to pop a few of these. Uh, I've got three gongs and two sodas. We'll hit those. We'll get over to the long range and uh, see if we can lob some rounds in at kind of longer range. You guys know that I love these rifles. They're just so much fun to shoot. All right, let's take out a soda here. <laughs> All right, headshots on our gongs there. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Guys, that right there, watching those gongs fall like that, that is a true testament of the power of the 4570, especially these 325s. You know, that, that, that bullet right there is getting down. It's moving pretty quick. It's got a ton of energy. And I don't know if any of you guys are hunters or not. I am. And I've shot a deer with a 4570 before. It, let, let's just say it puts them right down. Uh, it's a very, very effective hunting cartridge. It'll take a wide variety of different game in North America and really anywhere for that matter. And I'll tell you what, there's just something about 4570 traveling down range 
that uh, when you're out on the range playing with this thing, people notice. They hear that loud concussive report of this round going off, the energy when it slaps a steel or a watermelon or a soda, and that's why we wanted to show that off, just to show the amount of power this thing has. So uh, let's see how accurate it can be. We're going to take it out to maybe two or 300 yards, get on the bench rest, have a little fun, and uh, just see if we can lob some of these 325s in at a little bit longer range. We'll get chat on that. All right, guys, you know I can't let Eric have all the fun, so before we go to the top of the hill and show you what this thing can do at longer range, we've uh, set up our little soda baffle down here. And you might remember this from the Underwood 458 SOCOM video we did a little while back, and uh, we were showcasing just how much penetration you can get out of those XP rounds that we were running. But anyways, we thought we would uh, run this FTX uh, projectile against our soda baffle and just, you know, kind of see how much it'll go through. It's kind of like redneck ballistic shell, if you will, but... Anyways, we're going to take this 325 grain FTX pill, which is an awesome, awesome projectile. Uh, it's a Spitzer style with a soft tip, so it's designed to be ran in tubular magazines, such as this lever gun here. And uh, they get a little bit better ballistic coefficient, flatter trajectory at longer range. And uh, like I said, we'll put that to the test here shortly. But if we don't get the desired result that we want with this round, we might try one of our hard cast pills and just see what that'll do. That's more of a standard 4570 load at right, right about uh, 405, um, 405 grains. But anyways, let's uh, have a little fun. Let's see what this FTX will do. Here we go. <laughs> oh, well then. <laughs> I destroyed our baffle, but uh, let's go see what happened. All right, I have to say I was a little surprised by that result. Wasn't really expecting that round to really punch through so much material, but I mean, it is 4570, it's a big old honking steaming round, but we uh, completely obliterated our first bottle. The number two, big old gaping hole. Number three, big old gaping hole. Number four, split it up. Number five, starting to lose a little bit of energy probably and whatnot, left a little hole on the backside, and it just barely hit this one here, this last bottle. And uh, we tried finding the projectile, but I mean, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack out here. We can't really see it from the slow-mo, but I'll tell you what, hitting all them bottles, it's just raining soda. It's just insane. But anyways, we uh, kind of destroyed our baffle system, so I guess the uh, hard cast test will have to wait till another day. We might have some, some different ammo for that. But anyways, let's move up the top of the hill and see what this thing can do at long range. All right, well, the Henry lever action is not running too bad. That 4570 will really put a stomping on some stuff. You saw there with the soda baffle, getting some good penetration. Uh, Chad's opted to run the cameras a little bit. We're gonna get behind the gun. I'm gonna take a few shots from the bench. We're just gonna have a little fun and try to lob a, a few rounds in here. And uh, one thing I will say, guys, full bore 4570 ammo is not pleasant to shoot from the bench. Uh, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, we're gonna do it anyway because it's just so much fun. We've got a couple of gongs posted at various distances. It's connecting at 100 with pretty boring regularity for the most part. Uh, we're going to try getting in at two, 300 yards, see if we can kind of drift some shots in here and just have a little fun. These guns provide so much entertainment value. They're just so much fun to shoot and everything, and you just can't go wrong with 4570 slapping on downrange and just messing stuff up. I mean, you're going to hear in a second, when that round hits that gong, it's nothing to play around with. Hopefully, I can deliver the goods. Many of you will probably opt for some form of sighting arrangement that lends itself to a little bit better, finer target shooting in terms of, you know, finer point of aim and everything. These buckhorn sights don't really lend themselves to target shooting. They do acquire quite quickly. You can really get behind them and just pick them up quick. And they're good for, you know, close to medium-ish range hunting applications. But for something like this, you'd really want some form of optic. But we're going to shoot with irons because... It's just such a nice uh, configuration to have the gun in. So I'm gonna try to just poke one in at 200 here. You ready, Chad? Yeah, 250. Okay. Oh, 250, <laughs> okay. Our 200 gong is MIA right now. Oh, okay, I got you. Run it. Right off the edge at three o'clock, perfect elevation. Tell you, tell you one thing. This ain't no Mickey Mouse gun. High, two o'clock. Oh, went, went a little high, huh? Yeah. Okay. Guys, remember one thing 
the, the target that I'm shooting at is a fairly large round gong and the front sight post just about obscures it even at 250 yards. So like I said, not quite the finest sights, but we'll get it on the plate here in a second. Just gotta play around and find your point of aim. Once you find that point of aim, it'll generally put them right in there. Let's give it a try here. Yep. A little low around five o'clock, but you're on it. Man, I tell you, the thing just puts a wallop on things. All right. Just off at three. Oh, look, just a little bit on the high side there. I'll bring her down just a little bit. You know, one thing about that 325 grain FTX is it's a here and there bullet. That thing is moving fast. You know, that the ogive of that bullet and the shape of it, it cuts through the air so quickly. I'm convinced if I were to scope this thing, you could drill those targets all day long. It's just the iron sights leave a little bit to be desired, at least for my style of shooting. But they will get the job done. You ready? Yeah, send it. Okay. Just off at five. Just over the top? No, just off the uh, plate, a little bit low and right. A little bit low? Yep, off at five o'clock. Yeah, not too bad. Send it. Same place. Wow. Right off at four or five o'clock there. Low right. Yeah, these sights probably need to be drifted a bit. There you go. Still favoring low and right. No problem. Low right off at five o'clock again. <laughs> it's consistent in that little area. It sure is. <laughs> I mean, I'm keeping the same point of aim and just trying to favor around just a little bit because with these buckhorn sights, you know, a little bit of movement equates to a ton of movement down range. So you have to make very minute adjustments in your point of aim or drift the sights in zero for a given, given distance, of course. All right. Got it. Thing of beauty. When that round hits that gong, man, it's just smoking. All right, one more. We're going to try a little bit longer range here. Think I know where I'm at here. Yep. One more for the long ranger in the sky. How about that? Go ahead. Low right at four o'clock. Cool. I'd move that uh, side up just a touch for three. All right, we'll see if we can adjust this buckhorn here. There you go. Maybe try to get a good bullseye hold on that thing. You can yeah, see we're going to see what we can do. All right, and you said that's 300 yards? Uh, just shy. Gotcha. 290. Right. Couple of more long range shots here. We're going to poke this uh, 325 grain FTX out to pretty long distance here. Earlier, Chad and I were testing out the trigger on this thing. Breaks at a nice, clean four pounds with the trigger pull gauge. Definitely got a good trigger. I think um, what this is definitely going to merit, I think we're going to scope this thing and revisit this video with the optic and show you how well this thing can really shoot. But preliminary accuracy, pretty cool, you know? All right, you ready? Send it when you're ready. I'm going to bullseye it a little bit. All right. All right, give your uh, buckhorn a little more elevation there. You're still favoring quite right, so. Gotcha. Okay. Makes me think of uh, Randy Quaid in Lonesome Dove. You're just wasting your bullets. <laughs> I'd love to get a pair of like 
lime and marble peep sights on this thing. Be pretty cool. Yeah, it'd be really neat. All, All right, right ready? It. Yeah, send it. Got it. Still favoring slightly right. Huh. I'll tell you what. It's kind of like talking about laws of motion, you know, Newton's law of motion, equal and opposite reactions, that whole mess. When you squeeze the trigger on this thing, it lets you know it's there. It kicks the, the crud out of you from the bench. But when you think about all that energy that the gun is dispersing, imagine what you're feeling in your shoulder. Think about what's happening downrange, the amount of power that that projectile has when it reaches its target. Pretty, pretty neat to think about the ballistics. All right, we're gonna try again here. All right, send it when you're ready. Mm -hmm. Elevation was spot on, man. That went just a little bit high off at two o'clock. Same place, just off at two. <laughs> All right, one more round. Just to say we tried here. <laughs> the uh, front sight post on this thing is covering the target by about 50%, so I guess kind of like a 50-50 <laughs> chance of seeing what I'm aiming at here. Yeah, same place, right off at two o'clock. Well, one thing that we are seeing here the gun is certainly consistent. You know, what Chad and I are noticing is that with your point of aim being consistent, the rounds are sailing into one like tiny little spot, although not really hitting where we want. That could just be an issue with the gun not being zeroed like we want or whatever. But I think that it proves the gun is certainly consistent. There is some consistency here that we can, we can certainly ascertain is present in the gun. So I think that this is gonna definitely beg for a part two. We're gonna um, get one of those, uh, I believe it was a Weaver 63B base uh, for this thing. And we'll drop a scope on it and take it out and shoot some groups, see what kind of accuracy potential we can get out of it with an optic. We might even run one of the all weather guns and kind of put together like a, you know, ultimate 4570, you know, lever action hunting rifle or something like that. Whatever we decide to do, we will stretch the legs on this gun some more. And I'll tell you what, I'm gonna present a little challenge, even for myself, okay? We're gonna challenge ourselves. I think that this gun is accurate enough that we can probably hit a 12 inch gong at almost 400 yards. I think it'll, it'll lob right in, no problem. So we're gonna scope it. We're, I, I really like the hand load. I, I think this hand load that Chad worked up is very consistent. Um, it's got you know good velocity, it's getting out there. You can see that round slicing through the air. It's punching right in there. So I think this, uh, this video definitely begs for a part two. So stay tuned. I think with it, we can definitely figure out what's going on with this guy. 4570 is so much fun to shoot. My shoulder's not too happy right now, but I tell you what, I'm not gonna cry about it. Life's gonna go on. Um, the gun's running great. We had a lot of fun making this video. I always relish the opportunity to shoot 4570. It's one of my favorite calibers. It's one of Chad's favorite calibers. You guys know that. But uh, thank you for watching. We had a ton of fun making this video, and we'll catch you next time. Stay tuned for part two. We will do it. See ya.